We're live now. All right, here we go. All right. It's 9.25. Hey, what's up, everybody? Today is 9.25, 2017. Turn this fan off. So, uh, I recorded a bunch of videos, and then I went back, and I haven't published them yet, and this is the beginning, beginning, very beginning. I need to express a few things before we get into these videos. So, as you can see here, I'm working on this system. Um, so all the videos about this system are my non-biased opinion and I am just trying to document what I'm doing, take notes, and show you guys what I've done. I'm not making any claims, I'm not trying to prove anything to anyone, I'm merely trying to document what I'm doing. So I'm documenting everything I'm doing the best I can, just plain Jane, and I need you guys to realize that you guys... You, everyone that's going to watch this video is going to have a biased opinion. They've already seen this thing, they've already been through this thing, they've already thought about this thing, but I'm doing things differently. I'm doing them in a way that makes sense to me. So here's the thing. I'm not doing electronics engineering or electrical engineering. Those principles should still apply. I'm trying to think about this using physics. Okay, that's what I'm trying to do. So I'm trying to demonstrate this to myself, bringing you along, and I'd appreciate it if you would start these thought processes with an open mind and a new way of looking at it. Take your electrical engineering understanding, set it aside, think about this using physics for a while, and then watch these videos as I publish them, and just listen to what I have to say without a biased opinion. That's all I ask, and I know the comments are probably going to be lit up with negativity. It doesn't bother me. You can have your opinion, but have it non-biased, okay? If you've never set up an experiment like this, or this exact experiment, don't have a biased opinion on it. Don't do it. It's not going to be helpful. Keep an open mind. All right, so with that said, enjoy these series of videos. They'll be published as I publish them. I will have them dated. Like I said, today is 925. The first video in the series was who knows when. And these are pretty long, documentative, as I'm doing it videos. So that's all I got for you. Enjoy. Um, and if you want to know my thinking, my ideas, my principles, watch the video series Searching for Answers that will help you understand what I'm thinking, how I'm applying pr principles here in the physics understanding of my ability to think through it. All right, there you go. Have fun. Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Russ with rwgresearch.com. So I was doing some digging in my hard drives, and I found some old footage of some old projects. And I figured uh, this is probably something that a lot of you would be interested in seeing. So, and uh, this video and the video series that you're going to be watching um, is actually my sort of personal reference videos documentation. So I'm just going to publish them one at a time from the beginning to the end. And this is like I'm showing you each part across the board along as we made progress, as we learn new things, as we talk to certain people about how things are supposed to work. So that's what this is and uh, that's what I'm going to show you. So enjoy the video and remember, remember this is a few years ago, but uh, this is what I learned and now's a good time to publish it. So enjoy. Now we're going to document what I've been doing last week. Uh, Alright, what's up everybody? Here we go. So today is uh, 9-25-2017 and I'm going to give you my opinion on what I've been doing and what I've learned, what I understand, what I'm going to be doing, uh, how I'm going to be switching batteries around, what I'm going to be looking for, and I just want to document that while I'm doing it. So I only got eight batteries. This system is designed to run at 48 volts or above. I can only run it at 24 volts 
comfortably using these eight batteries. Now, what I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm switching batteries in a way that makes sense to me, but if my ideas work the way I think using this method, I could actually take one more battery and add it to this bank, which allows me to add one more battery here, which gets me up to 36 volts. And if that seems to work, then I'll go ahead and go to getting a few more of these particular batteries because I have a big bank of batteries behind the camera that are different size and I don't want to intermix them with this test. Doesn't make sense to do that. Um, so let me show you what I got going. I'm going to bring you on this side of the bench. Actually, let me talk about what I've learned. Um, so first of all, let's talk about this. What the heck is this? Uh, that is a battery bank of dead batteries. Um, there's a man named Ozzy. Don't know his last name. Sorry, or for, maybe that's his last name, first name. Uh, if I watch this and I remember, I'll link it in the description. If I don't remember, remind me to put it in the description. Tell me in the comments. But um, this battery bank is from a UPS, 220 volt UPS. And there are two battery banks here. They're, all these batteries are connected in series. All of them. And Ozzy claims to have a working system and he claims that this is a huge part of his system which is using dead batteries to charge the flyback batteries. Okay, so the, the negatively charged flyback battery charging system loves this type of load. And this type of load allows the system to soak up the energy but it can't go past these batteries because these batteries are good batteries and they can't really go too far above what these are rated at. I mean, they can, but you'll destroy them. So these batteries, is 100, there's 280 volts worth of batteries. There's 20 12 volt batteries in series. And when I plugged this battery bank in the very first time, they were sitting at 14 volts. All 280 volts worth of batteries were sitting at 14 volts. So I'm going to check them now after one cycle of plugging them into the bank here, and then I'll keep explaining. I'm curious what these are sitting at. Uh, uh, hold on. Bear with me. Okay, they were at 16 volts and dropping fast. Eh, okay, they settled out. About 15.5 volts, which is, you know, about the maximum that I want to charge these anyway, so it's like perfect. So Ozzy claims that by having this huge battery bank of dead batteries that are either sulfated, some of them shorted out, just dead, um, these batteries potentially are still good if I were to charge them. I don't know how sulfated they are, but they've been sitting dead for about three years, so they're probably shot. Um, however, if I wanted to, I could try charging them up, but that's not my interest. My interest is using this to charge this. Now how does that work? Well, you have to connect these after the bank. So at the end of the bank. Actually, I need to move this wire if I wanted to do that properly. I should move that wire. Over there, actually. Anyway, no, over there. Anyway, the point is, is that this battery bank, okay, is at trying to get to, you know, 15 volt maximum, 14 point something volts to charge. Uh, this battery bank is trying to get to basically way past 280 volts. It can't get there, so what does it do? It just soaks up all that negative flyback energy and it just soaks it up and it allows it to be put into these batteries because it can't get past these batteries. So it's trying to bring these batteries up, yet it can't because it doesn't allow it to go too far. It's very strange. It doesn't make any logical sense, but it does if you want to think about this using physics and not electrical theory. Or maybe you could apply electrical theory that I haven't thought of, but the point is, is that's what he says, and well, I'm going to find out. I haven't run this too many t cycles, matter of fact, only really once with these, and it appeared to help, but time will tell, because it seems like when these batteries are very low, it wants to bring them up slowly until they get to where they want. Then they'll jump up to like 15 volts and just sit there happily. So I'm hoping that these batteries jump up to 15 volts almost instantly because of this bank. If that's true, which we'll find out in the next cycles, 
Uh, if that's true, then we got something here. This is making sense. So right now it's an experiment, but it's an experiment by someone who I trust had a working system. So, um, okay. So what else? Well, I've only got eight batteries, and what I've been what I've been doing is since I went to 36 volt, I only got eight. So what I've learned is these batteries. You probably can't. I probably need to move the camera so you can see these. Let me do that because there's batteries behind there. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll move you over here. How about that? Okay, so these batteries are in series. Okay, and these batteries are in parallel here. So I've got 36 volts dumping into 12 volts. This is 35 amp hours worth of capacity. This is 35 amp hours worth of capacity, but I've got three in series. So this is truly 35 amp hours worth of capacity because they're in series. This, however, it's not 35 amp hours. Technically, if you want to think of them like capacitors, the capacity here is bigger um, because you have them in, in, in parallel. So what that means is these series batteries can't dump enough energy into these parallel batteries. But you need these batteries because the energy is trying to go into the positive and charge these batteries from these batteries. So eventually, I may actually end up taking this one battery and making I think I already said this, but making this battery bank bigger, if these charge faster, then I can run at a higher potential and I can really swap these out. The problem is, is I got different size batteries and I don't have any more of this size, so I can't do quite what I want. So I'm going to make a, my plan anyway is to make a chart, a graph, a system of switching these batteries out for a week, just like this. If I find it doing what I expect, which is these going up faster and still having capacity, right because these are batteries you have to look at the capacity of the batteries not just the voltages and then I may end up actually with just one here and so I'll take these dead batteries put them here and the one dead battery and put it here and I'll take this one dead battery and put it here and I'll keep this cycle going and going and going as for as long as I can now I have a watt meter and it is tied to the to the system and I'm gonna put a second watt meter on here which is not in the line it's a, a different type of watt meter, and we'll see if they read the same. I'm reading across the potential. So the voltage drop across the potential. The voltage drop across the motor and the current flowing through the negative side of the system into this positive as my watts being consumed. I think that's right, but I'm not 100% sure that's the proper way to measure this. It's kind of confusing because of the difference. But anyway. So what have I learned? Um, that's about what I've learned. Right now I'm balancing these three batteries because the way that this was connected I couldn't, couldn't do it. But from now on, these three will always be balanced. So when they're put in, in parallel, sorry, these three parallel batteries when put in series will always be balanced. And so I don't have to worry about balancing them. And you balance them by connecting them in parallel. Okay, that's a lot of information. Um, I did do something I want to talk about. I will bring you I will bring you over here. I, I don't I really don't recall if I talked about this. And so I want to talk about it now because I just don't remember if I talked about this. So um, so this little box is a pulsing box. Uh, 0 to 10 kilohertz. It'll do modulation on top of it, so it'll do pulse trains. I'm not using the pulse trains, but what I did is, you know, this rotation is all extra. You don't have to use this rotor. You can just oscillate the coils and the system runs just fine. So I did that. Um, I connected this wire right here, okay? I removed the trigger wire. Don't forget, 80 circuits, one trigger wire, so there's 79 circuits doing flyback recovery energy, and one circuit's doing nothing because the wire is being used as a trigger. And I disabled the trigger wire altogether, which is this coil here. I took it off, and um, let me make sure my face is in there. Well, I'm happy. Um, whatever. So, so I did that. I removed the trigger winding. I still connected the bulb and the resistor or the potentiometer. And I connected it here, okay, and I connected it through this MOSFET that's being pulsed. 
And so what I did is I just completely uh, disabled the rotor. The rotor wasn't spinning at all, and I was just using a frequency. And above 5 kilohertz, and this box only goes to 10 kilohertz, I think I'd find better stuff at higher frequency, but maybe not. Um, but somewhere between 5 and 10 kilohertz, I could vary that depending on the voltage. It was very voltage dependent, so it was current dependent. But I could get this extra spike, and I could get this extra amount of current flow. The spike was like only a couple of volts, but the amount of time the spike was on was huge. And the battery charged up much, much faster. And so I'd like to, what I wanted to do was modulate this as it's rotating. So I can get rotation and modulation, but the system doesn't like that. So I couldn't get that to work right. Um, I think I could actually get the system, I could get this rotor spinning at the frequency I'm running, but this rotor would be going really fast and it probably would have like no torque. Uh, which it's not designed to have torque anyway. I'm just bringing that up. But I did do that, and um, basically what I learned is it seems to do better. The system seems to do better, but you lose your rotation. So that's it. Uh, I think that that's basically all I have, all I've learned. There's so many things to talk about, but. Um, what matters most is that I am the world's greatest farter. Anyway, I love this shirt. Thanks to my sister. Thanks, Sally. Oh, also, I got these ginormous, these were, I don't know, these were a little expensive, but, but I think it's worth it for this testing. So right now I'm undoing all these batteries and redoing all these batteries and it really sucks. So I got these connectors. I'm a little concerned about the resistance, but they're 180 amp. If you just Google PP180, you'll find these. And so these are designed for like big fork truck batteries and stuff like that. I'll show you a close up later, but basically um, I'm going to make all new cables, which will be faster because I'm using a hand crimper. I'm using all new cables and these will be fixed with plugs on the top. So as long as I wire them correctly, because like this one has two, right? This one has two, this one has two. So I'll have to think about the rotation or I'll have to add two to each battery, um, which I might do just for easy switchability. And so that'll allow me just to switch these batteries around real quick, but I am I'm a little concerned about the resistance of those. So, but uh, the, the connection here is probably about the same amount of resistance as what those are going to give me. So the contact surface on those versus these are probably equal. So it doesn't really matter, I don't think. Um, but that's something to think about. High resistance is very important. So yeah, I'm not going to bring anything else up because I don't want to, like I said, I don't want to go into theory too much here. I just want to discuss what I'm doing, what I've done, what I've, what I've seen. Uh, also note, like I said, today is the 25th, 9 25, 2017. I have not yet charged any of these batteries. I started out with two, and then I went to four, and then I went to six, and now I'm at eight. So I've run this system for two weeks now. I've not yet charged any of these batteries externally. I've not used any external power. The only external power I'm using is the watt meter, and I should probably not even do that. But it's just plugged in. But, <laughs> but to give you an idea, this is 210 milliamps at 12.2 volts. Not enough to charge these batteries. So that's it. I'm taking a tally on watt hours run. Like I said, using the voltage across the motor and the current flowing through the ground. And, I'm, and basically, I'm just going to start adding up watt hours. How many watt hours have I run? And how many times have I charged the batteries externally? So far, none, which is rather interesting. Um, again, I've been adding a, a fully charged battery, but I did not charge these batteries when I received them in the mail. I did not do anything. I just started connecting batteries, <coughs> excuse me, and started running the system. And, and that's it. That's all I got to say. So thanks for watching. And um, I'll probably record a video at the end of this week once I determine how these batteries are reacting with this crazy dead bank and 
extra batteries here versus there. And uh, Another thing to note is I'm using 36 to charge 12, which if you look at the original schematic, which I need to show you a schematic. If you look at the original schematic of a Bendini system, such as this, you only use two batteries. You never charge a battery this way. You always just short the battery, which is not going to work for what we want. And you're always trying to charge a battery, and you lose there. Here, there's a three battery system that allows you to not lose that the same way, if at all. My hopes are high. We'll find out soon. Let me show you the schematic before we go. Um, this is a pretty poorly drawn schematic. I'll show you my notes while I'm at it. Ooh, a bunch of numbers. Okay, so here's the schematic. Okay. So three battery banks. Um, not to get into this yet, but this wire right here will actually be able to do more work. Totally isolated from the system and we're done. We ain't there yet. That's a, that's a fourth phase thing. We ain't there yet. Um, so that's what the system looks like. Hopefully you can read all the notes. Um, I'll explain it on this one a little better. So you have three... Did I write that wrong? Uh, oh, times 12. I wrote down two. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> so this is 36 volt. This is 12 volt. And this is 12 volt. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Um, so we have these run batteries. I should probably write that down too. This is a run. This is primary run. This is secondary run slash slash charge okay and these are um, fly back charge okay so you've got three batteries in series right that gives me a differential potential of 24 volts because we've got two 12 volt batteries in series I'm sorry in parallel series here parallel here so more capacity of battery here but only two batteries. Uh, less capacity here, but three batteries. Again, this one eventually I might switch to one, so we technically should be able to fully charge this battery with these three. It sounds weird, like you're only charging with three, but if the flyback batteries charge faster than these, which so far they seem to be doing, because more batteries here, you can put as many as you want here, and it doesn't really matter what's going on here. It's sort of an isolated system from, the, from, from here. Okay, so um, yeah. So that's what I'm doing. All right. Peace out. God bless. Have a good day. We'll see you another time. These videos are long, but if you really want to follow along, you should watch all of these videos. It's documenting what I'm observing. No bias opinion. All right. See you. All right. So if you like that, um, you know, there's going to be quite a few more of these videos coming. Um, and I'm just going to publish them as I recorded them. There's no fancy cutting or editing. I'm just going to put them out there as I recorded them as documentation for uh, everybody who would like to see more about this device. So um, stick around and learn with me as I learn. Like I said, I, I, I really learned a lot as I progressed through this entire experience. And then when we get to the very end, I'll give you my full conclusion. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching. God bless. Read the Bible more. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.